Hello everybody, welcome back to Firefield Junction and welcome to another review for you. Hope the year has started off well for you. Hope you're enjoying uh, your new additions that you hopefully got over Christmas and hope you're enjoying your trains in general. And I hope um, that 2024 um, starts off well for you. Hope you're enjoying it. Um, but in the model railway community, it seems we've uh, had quite an eventful start to the year, or at least certainly in the last few days. Obviously, recently we had the Hornby 2024 range announced, and there will certainly be um, a couple of a couple of new additions coming to the layout. Hopefully, in the future, from those announcements, I won't say what they are, although I'm sure probably you can probably guess, uh, depending how well you know me and what I model mainly. I'm sure you can probably guess um, at least uh, probably at least one of those new additions. Um, but certainly um, not a massive range um, that we've seen from Hornby and I suppose quite similar to last year. But in a way I suppose that's a good thing because it allows them uh, to catch up with uh, models announced previously. And I believe that is one of the main things that people have been wanting. Um, they want, basically we want, um, well I suppose I want it as well because it is a good thing, that we want to see Hornby prioritise those odd releases because obviously we've been waiting for a while for them. So it's good, um, I suppose, that if they don't announce as much new stuff now, it gives them more time to catch up on some of those older releases and get them released, get them out there. Then hopefully maybe in the future we'll see a bit more variation and see some a larger, basically a larger range announced um, in future in future years from them. Uh, so, so certainly not the worst range, I suppose, announced, um, but definitely not the best either. But uh, hopefully there was something in there for everyone. If there wasn't anything in there for you, then I suppose that's that, so that's just the case. Um, but it's still good to see um, what new models we're going to be getting in the future, depending how exciting they are. Um, but yeah, overall, um, I suppose uh, not too bad there. Um, but at least we've had the announcements now, and so we've got um, some of us have, have hopefully now got some uh, new models to look forward to. But it's another news and bad news. Hattons. <laughs> What's happened? I can't believe that. It's certainly not something I was really expecting. Um, or, well, in a way, I kind of was expecting it in the background, like given Hatton's history and what's been happening with them over the past few years, and well, I suppose in well, a bit longer than that, um, just generally what's been going on with them. I just can't believe it. I just can't believe we're losing them. I've I've purchased so much from them in the past. Overall, and well, yeah, overall, my experience from Hatton's has been pretty good. I've definitely enjoyed shopping from them. Only ever had one sort of major issue, I'd say, with, with the purchase. But overall, I've really, I've really enjoyed purchasing from them. I think they've been a pretty good company. It's been nice uh, getting new models from them. Quite a bit of the collection that I have has come from them, which again, I suppose, is because I've purchased so much from them. But yeah, it's going to be a real shame um, in the future to basically not be going there anymore. It's always a shame to lose any manufacturer or um, or retailer, any business in the model railway community. Um, so it's going to be a real, sh real shame to lose them, um, and so I'll definitely have to try and do another order from them before they go. Um, definitely try and get uh, some something else from them before they go, because obviously you won't get the chance anymore after that. Um, but yeah, new, news aside, what are we looking at today? Well, as we can see, it's by Batman, and it's a DMU, and it's a Class 108. Um, definitely not uh, like anything I've looked at before. I haven't looked at any first generation DMUs before, I think. And it's been quite a while since I've looked at a DMU in general, so it's uh, quite nice, I suppose, take a break from the locomotives and everything else and take a look at a DMU again for once, uh, because, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's been a while since I looked at one. And as we can see, this model is quite old, um, and this is, I'm pretty sure, basically the first release of the 108 that Batman did. Um, they have done it uh, quite a few uh, more times after this. Um, this particular model came out in 2006. Um, or, well, it might have, there might have been other versions that came out before that, but this particular one... Uh, definitely came out in 2006 because that's what it says on the inside of the box um, because obviously Batman's um, products if you don't know if you look inside of the box whether it's on, on an older version like this somewhere on the inside of the box um, on the new releases with the block of ice packaging it will be printed on the back of the cardboard tray and there's a date there that basically tells you when that exact uh, model or loco or whatever I'm not sure if it's when it was released but probably when it was packaged at least I believe there's an exact date on that tells you and it starts off it'll be the year then the month and then the date of that month if you like so it's basically you read it in reverse um, i don't know why they do it like that but that's how they do it um but yeah this particular one came out in 2006 i'm not entirely sure when the most recent uh, version came out um obviously it will be um i doubt it'd be overly that um too long ago but um, i'm not entirely sure when batman last had the class 108 in their range um but again i'm pretty sure it probably has been a little while um, and I'm not too sure if they've really upgraded it at all either um, from basically from this um, particular release. Um, I'm pretty sure it might just be pretty, pretty much exactly the same uh, to this version 
um, so I doubt too much has changed, but I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, this particular one um, came out in 2006, and this one is in the BR Green livery with speed whiskers. And obviously it's not that particular livery, obviously, because it's got the yellow panel. But if we look on the end of the box, we can see the model code for this exact one is 32-900, class 108 DMU, two car, BR Green with speed whiskers. And uh, if you don't know what the speed whiskers are, they were basically, I'm guessing it was probably more of a scientific thing um, in a way. Um, but they were added uh, to a lot of uh, DMUs, um, first generation ones. And it has been proven that they add five miles per hour to the top speed, which is quite cool, actually. And um, quite an interesting thing. I'm sure there's a load of history about um, the speed whiskers in general um, out there that you can look up if you want to. Um, but yeah, it's quite cool that just by adding those uh, to the, the units that you can um, basically get it to go faster. Um, but this particular one, um, it's also DCC ready, as we can see there. So um, eight pin DCC ready in both units. And there's no electrical connection between the two cars on these models. It's you do have to put an eight pin decoder in both units, um, which obviously is well it's understandable. But obviously, if this was brought back today, if Batman were, were to retool it and upgrade it, obviously we would definitely have a an electrical connection between the two units, so that you only need one decoder. Um, and this particular unit has been chipped as well, by the way. It actually came well, it came chipped when I bought it um, anyway from Hattons. It did come from Hattons. <laughs> Probably no surprise there. Um, but yeah, it did come chipped uh, by the previous owner, so I don't have to worry about chipping it, which is quite good. Um, and a bit of history, I suppose, on the 108s in real life. Um, probably good to get out of the way before we get into looking at the model. Um, they were built between 1958 and 1961. Um, they built 333 of them, so loads and loads built. Um, they were withdrawn, um, all withdrawn by 1993, um, but loads have been preserved, luckily, which is nice. Loads and loads of them have been preserved, so if you want to go and see one, um, it should be nice and easy. Um, there's pretty much loads of there's loads of heritage railways that have them, and um, there's one in the National Collection in York as well at the National Railway Museum. So yeah, if you do want to go and see one, it should be nice and easy for you. Um, but other than that, there's not too much else interesting on the box for us to look at. So we'll take the sleeve off, and then we've got the two um, typical sort of Batman boxes here. Um, so we might as well start off uh, with the most units. That's probably going to be the slightly more interesting one. So just open the box. So it should be nice and easy. There we go. We can slide it out and we'll put the box to one side so we've got the usual sort of um, card inserts here so we've got the photo on the front of the real thing then on the back uh, we can see their line drawing of the uh, units and we've got some history there of the uh, units in real life so if you want to read through that uh, then feel free to uh, but anyway let's open up the card and inside we've got the instructions and um, there was the collect uh, usual collectors cl club um, thing inside as well, um, but I got rid of that already because I, ha I have already had this model out of the box um, just to give it a, a test and everything, make sure everything was okay. Um, but anyway, let's open up the instructions so we can see um, about uh, the model and see how we uh, gain access. So yeah, as we see, the usual stuff um, that, you, that you expect from the instructions. So we've got the um, body removal. Um, it's just a single screw of, um, underneath the front bogey on the front. And then you just unclip the, the body from the chassis. Um, it's a bit, I wouldn't say it's the hardest in the world. It's uh, definitely not the easiest, um, but it is doable. Just gently disengage the clips. They are quite easy to disengage. I'd say start from the front, work your way back, and then you can uh, lift the sh uh, shell off so you can gain access, fit passengers, uh, chip it, uh, do whatever you need to do. Uh, so decoder fitting, so it talks about there, um, about the eight pin uh, socket, and it is um, in both units. Um, recommending running on DC first, which is fair enough. Um, I always do that anyway. Uh, talks about what to code to use and then i believe the other bit is just the guarantee and all the usual stuff yeah so we're not really interested in that um but yeah very very good if you need to replace any parts you've got all the parts uh, numbers there should you need to replace any talks about where to put the oil all the usual stuff so very very good i definitely had to refer to them earlier when well i say earlier when i um back when i had to um uh, just, well when i had to take the body off anyway just to check um, everything was okay um, but yeah, there we go. There she is. Um, there, there is a little bit, damage, uh, little bit of damage to the model. Um, as you can probably see there, there is a bit of damage to one of the pipes underneath. Um, that was just how the model came, unfortunately, um, but it's not too bad. So, um, overall, most 99% of the detail is still there and it is uh, okay. So um, there might be um, a bit of extra detail that goes here. You can see there um, there's a glue mark. I'm guessing there might have been another bit of detail there. Um, I could be wrong, um, but um, it is a bit of a shame it got some damage, but again, it could be worse. Uh, the thing could be smashed to hell, <laughs> so um, yeah, I can't complain too much. Um, but anyway, let's uh, get her out and have a look. Oh, before I do that, so there is these couplings here. And these are just uh, so if you want to, but it's basically, basically just so um, in case you want to couple multiple of these together or couple it to another DMU, then you've got a couple of tension locks there. 
and then you can just uh, put them into the then pockets on the front bogey there so nice and easy to do um, i suppose it's nice that they've left them off because um, obviously not everyone is uh, probably going to want them on there uh, but we'll put those to one side to make sure that we don't lose them <laughs> but now we can uh, finally get them all out um, so just uh, gently get it out of the tray not uh, too bad and there we are so be really careful that i don't uh, damage any of the underframe um i should be okay I and mean, that's okay there yeah so there we go and yeah overall she's not too bad is she considering how old this is i mean 2006 this is pretty good it's uh, definitely uh, better than what probably hornby were doing at the time with uh, a lot of their models um but the buffers are sprung which is nice um, one of them's got a bit of a glue mark on them um, but again she is old she is second hand she's not brand new anymore so can't expect her to be in tip-top condition uh, the bogeys turn quite nicely We've got some nice painted axle boxes there and the underframe detail is very very nice it's not all one uh, solid color or one giant molded piece it is uh, got some depth to it again it's just a shame got that damaged pipe there i will have to fix that at some point um but it's uh, not too bad so i can live with it for now and um, you can see where the motor is obviously with the giant sort of blanked out section at the back there uh, but it is just the typical sort of batman motor i believe it is five pole in and around here and you've got a flywheel and it goes to the um sort of gear tower where you've got worm drive then that just drives this bogey here so it's single bogey drive but that's fine you don't need um obviously you don't need this entire unit driven for just this uh, two car unit the motor and having the, just this bogey driven is more than uh, sufficient enough to get the entire thing moving you really don't need anything else you've got most sprung buffers on the back and then you've got the typical sort of batman sort of european style roco whatever it is uh, sort of coupling there and um, which does the job couples the units together nicely you can see the decoder wires there in the back window um, it is just a standard 8-pin Batman decoder that's in here, um, but again, really nice decoder, does the job, I uh, do recommend them if you want to chip anything. Um, the lights do light up, so you've got the um, destination boards light up, then you've got the head and tail lights which work. Um, the headboard is not directional, so basically when you turn the lights on, it will light up in both units and that's that. Um, it's not too bad I suppose, whether it's realistic or not for these particular units I'm not too sure. Um, but it is still good, um, it's quite bright, so, so you're definitely not going to miss it. Um, but it's nice that we've got um, it lit up anyway, which is good. I suppose a lot of a lot of other units don't have that, um, so it's a nice feature. Uh, the interior is not too bad. Um, it is quite basic. There's not too much uh, depth to it, um, but it's okay, I suppose. Um, it's um, it will look better, obviously, if you maybe if you wanted to take the body off, put passengers in there, and maybe add a driver. You could paint it if you wanted to. Uh, plenty um, for you to do, and <laughs> depending on what you want to do. Um, but overall, yeah, it's not too bad. The livery is applied really well as well. I can't fault so the British Railways green. It's all been done very nicely. There's no blemishes anywhere. The stripes are all done very well. Yeah, overall, it's a great looking unit. So you've got the exhaust on the back as well. And the gangway uh, there, to the, which obviously goes to the other units. Overall, I can't fault it. It's a great little unit. Um, obviously, we have got the other units to look at in a minute as well. But overall, uh, she's great. Uh, pickup wise, as you can see, it's the um, sort of axle uh, point pickups, if you like, uh, which overall is fine. I quite like them, I suppose. Um, it's, I think it's definitely um, a more reliable connection than the wiper pickups. And obviously, there's uh, basically no friction there at all either. Um, I think, I don't, I don't know if that's dirt there. I think that might just be a mark on the wheel. I think that's just how the wheel is. Um, so I did give the wheels a clean when I first got her, and I don't think I've run her since then. So, um, so I think that might just be a mark on the wheel. But so yeah, overall, uh, not too bad so on the motorized bogey um the pickups are slightly different you can see there that we have got um the basically the metal well, i suppose the copper sort of um plates um, there running to the wheels but they it's, uh, they actually go to the bearings so it, it picks up through the bearings um on the motorized bogey which is well i suppose again it, if it does the job and it works fine then that's the main thing um servicing wise it might not be the easiest thing to clean um, but overall, um, it does the job. So overall, we shouldn't be um, be seeing any reliability issues with these. Um, as long as you look after it, keep it clean, keep it lubricated, it should serve you well for a very long time. But anyway, we'll put the motor units to one side. And we'll have a quick look at the dummy units. So it's going to basically going to be the same. Um, it's just not going to have any motor in it, so it's uh, going to be a bit more open inside, and it's not going to weigh as much. So grab the dummy units, get the box open, slide her out. There we go. So no instructions to look at inside here so just uh, try and get her out gently ease her out of her tray there we go and there we are so as you can see basically the same as the other units but obviously no motor inside so it's uh, also a lot lighter but again same as the other units sprung buffers 
got the lights that work again head uh, head and tail lights on the um, board at the top under frame detail again just as nice on the other units well i say that it's actually a bit more basic it's not actually as much on this unit um, but i'm pretty sure in real life both units have you both units have engines um, although i could be wrong maybe it's just one unit that has an engine on it in real life then um it's a bit strange um yeah it must be yeah okay i didn't realize that i thought but um being a DMU that uh, both uh, units would have engines on them both be driven um, in real life but obviously not um, so there's no exhaust on this one so this is basically just a coach then it literally is a dumb unit um, so I suppose that's me me told I should have done a re bit more research um, and I have ridden one on, ridden on one in real life so you expect me to know better but obviously not um, but yeah that aside yeah overall it's a great unit uh, just as good as the other one the liveries have done really well Got the windows with all the um, sort of window detail on them. Um, the underframe detail is not too bad. Again, you've got the painted axle boxes. And you can see the uh, sockets there for the decoder. Um, so it's uh, you can hide it uh, reasonably well. If we flip it over to the other side, you can see there you've got um, these sort of misted effects there. So I'm guessing this is where the toilet would be or whatever. Let's get the coupling out of the way. There we go. So you can hide the decoder and everything uh, behind there. So it's uh, fairly well hidden. It's not the best hidden, I suppose. Because obviously if you look, you can see the wires and everything there. Um, but it's overall not too bad. So they could have slapped it right in the middle of the unit um, where it's going to be really visible. Um, but at least there has been some thought that have gone into it. Uh, and they have uh, tried to hide the decoders and everything uh, quite well, which is good. So overall, I can't complain about it really. It's a nice model. It's uh, looked really good. It, the weight's not too bad either overall a very nice unit so i think all we need to do now then is head up to that out push on the track and see how she runs okay so here we are back over by the layout once again so we'll put the dumb unit on first i think i think that'll be the better option and the easier option there we go there we go all wheels are on i think yep we'll just move it back a bit out of the way and then we can do the motor unit we'll just make sure we get the on. There we go. Make sure we don't create any short circuits. That's what we don't want. There we go. And then just couple the two units together. Should be fairly simple. Yeah, there we go. I believe we are coupled. Yeah, there we go. It's still on, ready to go. So before we get her going, we'll put her lights on. Um, now she does have interior lighting as well. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but uh, she does have it. However, it's so dim, you cannot see it um, in normal light. So with the lights on, um, as I've got them on at the moment, you cannot see the interior lighting, they're so dim. However, once I've got the lights on, I will turn the lights off in here uh, so you can see it. The camera doesn't pick up the interior lighting incredibly well, even in pitch black. Um, it's still um, quite hard for the camera to pick it up. Um, but you can see it perfectly fine. I mean, person, I can certainly see it. However, uh, the camera just uh, still doesn't pick it up incredibly well. Uh, but anyway, let's just put our lights on. So press function zero, there we go. Um, I don't know why you can see it, if I just move it back a bit. You can hopefully see it there, the destination board is lit up and we have uh, got some nice uh, orange, uh, orange yellow um, headlights there. And if we change direction, there we go. Hope you can see those as well now. We've also now got tail lights as well. So very, very good. Uh, so I'll switch it back to going forwards. There we go. Uh, if I just move it back towards the camera a bit again. And I'll now switch the lights off in the room. So hopefully you can then see the interior lighting. So there we go. Switch them off. There we go. So hopefully um, you can now see, I can see them clear as day in here and they are a fairly good uh, colour temperature, but hopefully you can now see uh, there the interior lighting in both coaches. The camera's not picking up, picking it up incredibly well for some reason, I'm not too sure. It's not like it's incredibly dim, like stupidly dim. Um, they are uh, fairly good um, in terms of brightness um, in pitch black, but certainly I'm um, obviously with the lights on, you can't see them at all. But hopefully you can just about make out uh, the interior lighting there. If you wanted to, you could upgrade it to make it brighter. Um, some people have done that. Um, you might even want to do that. It's something I could even do in the future. Um, but it's not, uh, the, I'd say it's probably not the worst interior lighting in the world. Certainly for uh, um, obviously units of this age, um, certainly wouldn't have bright, white, uh, really modern looking interior lighting. Unlike some other models, I think the Hormi Class 800 comes into mind. I don't know why they fitted this colour lighting into those units when it should be white. Um, but still, it's nice we've got interior lighting. It's such a shame that you can't really see it at all um, in normal sort of room lighting. But anyway, enough being in the dark. Let's turn the lights back on. Lean over. Oh, where's the switch gone? <laughs> there we go. There we are. 
So yeah, hopefully um, that gives you an idea of the interior lighting in these units. Certainly not the best in the world, but it's still nice that we've got it. But let's just give her a wiggle and see what she's like. Let's see what a slow speed is like first. Let's see what speed step one is like. So yeah, not too bad, really, really smooth, a bit faster. Yeah, really, really nice. And the other way. Yeah, overall not too bad, very smooth, uh, fairly quiet. Overall not too bad. So let's get her running and see what she's like. Well, overall, she's performing rather well. Very smooth, very quiet, definitely not silent. The motor is a bit of a, it does have a bit of a groan to it. And obviously your performance may differ. It may be quieter, it may be louder. Obviously on DC, it will be different. And obviously the DCC, it depends on what decoder you use as well, can uh, depend quite a bit on noise. And even the DCC controller that you use can depend on the noise the model makes as well. But overall, certainly not too bad. A very nice performer at all speeds. Can't fault it. A beautiful model. Well, overall, I think this is a beautiful model from Batman. Definitely showing its age in a few areas. Obviously, I think, believe as, as I said earlier, if they were to bring this model back, it would definitely be upgraded in a few areas. You'd obviously have an electrical coupling between the two units, a much more modern decoder socket, most likely probably next 18 on plus 22. You'd have more functionality of the lighting, probably improved detail on the underframe and the interior. But overall, as she is, she's certainly not too bad. She runs well, she looks fantastic. She's definitely got her place, I think. If you want one of these, I recommend them. I definitely recommend them. Look around, try and get one for a really good price. And you won't be disappointed. These are beautiful DMUs from Batman. Old they may be, but they definitely don't show it, at least not in all areas. <laughs> And now time for some ratings for the Backman BR Green Class 108. So the detail on this model overall, I can't really fault it. It's definitely not the best in the world. I do feel that there could be a couple of improvements here and there, mainly being the underframe. I think the underframe uh, could be a bit better. A bit more painted detail on there would be nice. And I think the interior lighting, as nice as it is that we've got it, and it does look good in the dark. You can't see it at all in normal lighting. You literally cannot see it at all. You have to really, really look up close and even then you'll probably struggle to see the light. So I do feel that maybe the lighting could have been ever so slightly brighter, just so that you could get at least get a tint of it um, in the normal lighting, um, which is what you're normally going to see it in anyway. I just think that would be nice that you can actually see it to start with, just with normal viewing distance and in normal lighting. Just to see it, even, even ever so slightly, it just would be nice. But the fact that you can't see it at all in normal lighting, I just think it's a slight letdown because you've got that feature, but you can't really see it or really use it at all for the most part. It's a bit of a shame, but still, it's nice that we've got it, so that's the main thing. And overall, everywhere else, the detail is very nice. You've got a beautiful livery application, you've got sprung buffers, directional lighting, the headboards light up. The interior, I suppose, maybe is a bit lacking, but it's still nice um, that we could put some people in there. 
it's all been nicely moulded, overall the detail is acceptable. The performance on the model overall I can't fault it at all. The model runs beautifully, it's nice and smooth, it's consistent. The motors, I, I suppose, is, is a little bit loud, it's got a bit of grumble to it. But again, she's old, and maybe she's uh, starting to, maybe the motor's just starting to show its age a bit. Maybe she's not being looked after in the best of lights from previous owners. But it's certainly not too bad, it's still a decent uh, performing motor. There are louder ones out there. Overall, I can't fault the performance at all, really, really nice. The quality of the model overall is beautiful as well. It's all been nicely put together, obviously I can't mark it down for that much of damage because it wouldn't have been like that from the factory, or at least we hope not anyway. And then again, the liveries have been applied really well, all of the uh, details have been nicely moulded. Again, I just think it's that uh, interior lighting that lets it down, the quality of it, um, I just don't think is the absolute best that it probably could have been. Again, if it had been a little bit brighter, I think that just would have made the model a little bit better overall. Um, but apart from that little, little thing, overall the quality, I can't afford it at all. The value for money overall, I can't fault it at all for what I paid. I believe it was £98 that I paid for this model and for a two car DMU, DCC fitted, of this standard as well. You just can't you just can't fault it, can you? You just can't knock it down. It's absolutely it's absolutely amazing value for money. I do believe that most of the time, or 99% of the time, they will go for more than this. I probably just got quite lucky from patterns with this price. But certainly for the money that I paid, I can't fault it at all. Obviously, you might struggle to get one for the price that I did, but I certainly can't fault the value that I paid for it. Definitely 10 out of 10. So that's an overall score of 9.25 out of 10. Very well deserving. A beautiful DME from Batman. They'll bring it back. I'm sure it would be just as good as it is now.